Hello, our beautiful YouTubers. Oh my goodness, this topic is so freaking deep. We hope you guys are ready. It literally allows you to just experience and get through and shift through this question of like, how do I recover? How do I continue? How do I even like process this activation of meeting my twin flame and be able to function post twin flame activation in, in soul recognition and meeting your other self to this place of being able to experience anything that you did with your twin flame with other people during separation. How is that even freaking possible? And so we're excited to get deep on this. Uh, before we get started, Elizabeth's gonna give you guys a heads up of something special we've created for all of you during this holiday season. Go ahead, my love. We are so excited to bring you a Twin Flame Christmas this year. And in celebrating a Twin Flame Christmas, because let's get real, this journey is really hard. And to be able to have something fun to make it feel not only special, but like you're not alone, we've created the 12 Days of Christmas. So go ahead and sing along to the tune of A Partridge in a Pear Tree. That's what we designed it for. Every single day, we are gonna add a new item, program, coaching session, <laughs> Discount to include the sale from the previous day. So if you don't catch it one day, you'll still have a chance to catch it over the next couple days. So it'll be really fun. We hope that we can make this holiday season just something where you know you are not alone in this. So enjoy this savings, enjoy the fun, enjoy the magic that your awakening is bringing you. So excited, our loves. Let's go ahead and get started on this really, really deep video. All right, loves, here's the question that we got. The reason why it's hard for me to let go is knowing that he, my other self, is the only person I can feel such energy, such as fire in me, such a freedom in feeling my sexuality. I had never felt something like that in my life. And as I don't have it with my husband, and now I also know that I can't have it with him, my husband. It's hard to let go energetically sometimes. Many and Julian, I think I think I'm the perfect person. I love to this that. question. Go ahead, love. I think I think because <laughs> I can empathize and I can relate to it so much. So I had never felt uh desire, like a true desire until I met my person. And I had been married to my ex-husband for 14 years when I met my person and there was no desire there. It was actually forced, it felt like all the time. So I truly, truly understand. So when we meet our person, we are feeling their energy, which is our energy. We're feeling the energy of soul. We are feeling the closest thing to God's source energy in the way that they treat us, look at us, interact with us. So it, it becomes this addicting, very, very, like almost primal feeling when we first meet them. And it intensifies, but in a different way, once you're balanced. But this is the thing our people are almost like the gateway for us to love and fully i don't want to say recognize our own sexuality but to really feel into our sexuality as a being because i like joanne you like to mention this that raw from um, law of one will talk about one of the highest energies you can experience is actually being intimate with another person and yeah. so it's no surprise that when you had experienced that with your person, the intensity and the desire and the attraction was so real. And the attraction to them is that essence of God. We talked about this in another in a video mm -hmm. that we just recently made. They appear to us as godlike because literally when they're interacting with us through soul, they are embracing, embodying their God source energy with us. So we are attracted to the energy that is godlike so it's crazy but i get it because my perfect my person there is not one hair on his body that is out of place to me there is not one thing about his physicality that doesn't make me go oh my god right there he is the one person my entire life my entire um every every relationship i've ever had every intimate moment i've ever had with anybody nothing tops how I feel when it's towards my person. So here's what I want to say as far as this is 
this is the sort of paradox of this journey. Once you're awakened, you can't go back to sleep. You don't change things. I don't believe, like my, if I had to go back into being intimate with someone that wasn't my person, it would be really, really hard because I know what I know now. I can't stop knowing what I know now. I know how I felt, how I feel, how I am when I'm in the energy of God's source energy. So really when it comes to being with your husband, you have to be one at peace either way, either with when you're intimate with him or when you're not intimate with him, you have to be okay and be at peace with it. But it is not a button you can turn on and turn off. You are attracted to your energy. That's what makes your person so attractive to you. And no one else is going to bring you that energy. Your husband, another soulmate, nobody else can bring you that. So the attraction is never gonna be what it is with your person. And so my best recommendation is re regardless of how you proceed in your relationships, you have to be at peace with it. No judgment, no good, no bad, right? You're gonna step out of the role of duality and you're gonna embrace the embody the soul energy that you are. And you have to be able to be okay with the isness of what it is. And when it comes to your own sexuality, it's okay to explore your sexuality with yourself. And I know that sounds, we don't, it sounds so taboo and stuff like that, but our person has awakened something within us to be accepting of the sexual side of ourselves. It's not something dirty. It's not something gross. It's not something that is taboo. It's a natural thing that actually brings us to the highest level of self. So I really want to emphasize that it's okay. There is no judgment. Learn to embrace yourself because that's what you're craving with your, with your soul. And I am in deep, 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 deep meditation, right? I really feel like I'm one with God and one with source, universe, everything, right? I will correlate that time and time and time again with the most intimate, most amazing oneness explosion, intimate experiences I've had with and will continue to have with my person. I literally will close my eyes and I feel like I'm meditating and I'm with my person. And that's what it feels like to be intimate with your person is being able to experience yourself fully and wholly with someone else. And it's you experiencing your soul with another body. That's what it feels like. And so you can't unlearn what you know, right? It's almost like trying to go back to sleep once you've woken up. And we talked about this in another video where it's like, I can't see my, I can see all the life lines, the life time timelines I'm having. I can see a timeline with my person. I can see a timeline with a soulmate. And the one, the timeline with my soulmate will never correlate or even relate to the timeline with my person. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. And me, once I've experienced soul, I no longer can resonate being in mine because that's what it feels like to be with a soulmate. And there's nothing wrong with soulmates. I think it's, it's a very beautiful thing. It's just, I've had soulmates before and I have soulmates now. I have friends, family in my life where I connect with them through mine. This is that one time where you're going to connect with someone deeply in soul. And that also includes the full body experience of mind, body, spirit. It, with intimacy and it's it's it is it's like an explosion nobody else in the entire cosmos can give you that experience and vice versa they will never experience the same as you so know that the experience was in is as sacred as it was for you same as them because they can't ever experience that anywhere else either and so be at peace with that every connection that we have with others is different there's one of a soulmate right? That's a mate of your soul, which is a friend, family, or maybe, you know, for you, for you, it was your husband. And that's a relationship or experience that you're going to have that will never be the same as with your soul. The one with your soul is a relationship with you. It's a connection with your soul. And so what you're really experiencing is one with yourself. And that experience with yourself is untouchable so you can't relate or compare both experiences and I've said this I've said this before as well I would rather experience one moment of time with my twin flame than an entire lifetime with a soulmate because the experience that you have with your twin flame is one of soul 
and it's pure being. So even with a marriage or no marriage, it doesn't matter. You're never going to unlearn this activation of your soul. It's going to have shaken you up to the point where there's no one else that's going to resonate to this fullest capacity. And it isn't your fault. It isn't your person's fault. It isn't anyone's fault, really. It was part of your awakening in this timeline. You are now able to experience yourself in another body. So it was supposed to be this deep. It was supposed to be this soul shaking. It was supposed to be at this place that no one can ever touch in this energy with your person. And so being able to compare it with anyone else just doesn't make sense because this isn't something you can compare to because no one is going to be able to be your person just like no one else can be you to your person. It's something that you are going to have to be at peace with, whether you're married or not married. In your case, comparing your person to be like your husband and being able to connect with your husband in the way that you connect with your person is just unrealistic. Honestly, it's not fair for your your husband to try to fit that role that no one can reach. And it's also not fair to you. You didn't choose to have met your person. You didn't choose to have met someone else to lift, shift your life upside down. We don't choose the timeline or time frame of when we meet our soul. Our soul did that. Our soul knew we were ready. And for that, the activation was supposed to happen. And so the way that you are able to deal with this phenomenon is the way that everyone else is dealing with it, right? It's crazy freaking hard it's a crazy beautiful hard journey to process because you're never going to unlearn forget or move on from this awakening of soul being like revealed in front of you through this huge explosion of your oneness and soul is playful soul is joyful soul is a burst of itself it's a celebration and so when you are now able to express yourself sexually in a deeper deeper capacity you're really awakening to your true you and so the way that elizabeth said like raw heck yeah <laughs> like intimacy with our people it literally allows you to experience the highest joy of being and you will never experience it with anyone else and if you did experience it with anyone else then it would have been a soulmate and it wouldn't have been so like dramatic right it wouldn't have shook our world upside down it, we wouldn't have had a spiritual awakening and a dark night multiple dark nights trying to unravel this connection this is why this connection is so hard yet so beautiful at the same time because you get to awaken into the true you. So stop trying to compare the gifts and beauty that was revealed to you from your journey and just be with all of the experiences. Whatever happened before and whatever happens in the future is irrelevant at this point. All that matters is this moment now. And whoever you interact with from here on out is just in this present moment whether you're interacting with your husband or you're interacting with your person looking to your experiences in the now is going to allow you to have appreciation for all of your interactions and obviously your interaction with your husband is never going to be as intimate in the capacity that it was with your person but having acceptance of knowing the difference between what a soulmate and what a soul, right? A, a soul connection is, allows you to see which of the connections are more of a resonance to you. And it's going to be really hard, whether you are married or not married, to be able to recover <laughs> from this awakening of your soul. The cool part of being able to wake up to yourself is you get to experience you 
in the highest capacity to where you are literally becoming your best version of you. And that involves all you know, facets of your life because sex, sexual intimacy with our twin flame isn't just the, the physical aspect. It's an activation within you to awakening into your true self where you are no longer limited into who you are. And in that capacity, you're tapping into some soul purpose, some creativity. Like, don't just let the physical aspect be all that's left. Literally, what you felt with your person, that burst of joy that happened when you were both intimate, that's the burst of joy I, I keep like experiencing when I'm working on World's Cup of Joe. That's the burst of joy experience when we help beautiful clients and we hear you guys shift. So find ways to still ignite that fuel of soul awakening that happened to you, love, because that whole awakening ignition inside is meant to be created, explored, and shared with the world in however way it resonates. So whatever does resonate for you to be able to tap into this like sexual like desire that you think involves your person it's literally creation at its finest it really really is so the reason why i love this question is because we think it's about our person and now we have to choose between our twin flame and our soulmate when really all we have to do is choose ourselves and as we choose ourselves we get to give a piece of ourselves with the world and that also includes giving a piece of ourselves with the people around us in a really deeper way. You get to now experience life through pure being the true you. So appreciate and recognize every moment of now as a way to treasure the joy the sensuality the passion the fuel that comes out from you and every now and so what so what it was your twin flame that woke you up to it it's you you're always going to, going to have that ignition inside like me and elizabeth like our goddess vibes are like sexual like being that wants to share this love it isn't just for our people it's for our ability to like share our joy everything we touch becomes a birth of our our signature blueprint of soul so share a piece of you and everything you do from now on don't limit it to just your person and the physical body and what you did with your person it was to ignite you to become who you are i love this question we love you guys so much bye love you bye